much. Welcome to uh, a video version of our market on Open Note. It's Friday the 21st of June and it's the time of recording. It's just after 6 a.m. Eastern. Uh, today this will be published on a paywall free basis. So if you are new to our work, if you're interested in subscribing, uh, take a look. This uh, normally comes as a, a note every morning around the open or just after when we cover all the major US equity indices, cover oil, bonds, sector ETFs, and more besides and give you uh, two things one a longer term perspective on uh, each of those markets and a shorter term view as well so that if you're using this information to either invest long term or trade short term uh, we hope it's useful to you uh, any uh, interest in signing up there are links uh, all over our website uh, if you have any questions then head to our homepage sestringcapitalresearch.com and there's a little uh, link on the bottom called ask us anything and hit that and fill in the form and we'll come back to you with uh, answers to any questions you may have. Okay, so without further ado, uh, we're going to do a disclaimer and then we're going to get on to uh, the material at hand. Uh, I'll, thanks for viewing and we'll speak to you all later. So, disclaimer. This webinar is intended for US recipients only, and in particular is not directed at nor intended to be relied upon by any UK recipients. Any information analysis in the webinar is not an offer to sell or the solicitation of an offer to buy any securities. Nothing in the webinar is intended to be investment advice, nor should it be relied upon to make investment decisions. Session Capital Research, its employees, agents, or affiliates, including the presenter of this webinar or related persons, may have a position in any stock, securities, or financial instruments referenced in the webinar. Any opinions, analyses, or probabilities expressed in the webinar are those of the presenter as of the webinar's date of transmission and are subject to change without notice. Companies referenced in the webinar or their employees or affiliates may be customers of Session Capital Research. Session Capital Research values both its independence and transparency and does not believe this presents a material potential conflict of interest or impacts the content of its research or publications. Okay, so let's get to it. Um, so the first thing we cover each day, as you know, if you read our notes, is the 10-year the yield on the US government bonds. Why? Because uh, the direction of this tells us something about the price of money, and the price of money uh, is determinative in some degree of uh, the price of equities. Well, uh, this is the longer term curve for uh, the 10-year yield. So remember, if the yield is up, the price of bonds is down and vice versa. Here's the COVID low, March 2020, with a wave one up, a two down into August 2020, and then a climb all the way through uh, the rate hike cycle, and that doesn't peak till late last year, October 23. Uh, peaks at around 5%, as you may recall. Uh, and then we see a, a decline following a typical uh, technical decline of an A, B, C pattern. We're currently, I think, in the C wave of that correction. And those C waves are typically broken up into five waves. Here we have the start, uh, one down, two up, uh, which if you looked, you would see that uh, retraced to about the 78.6 retrace of that move. And we're now, I think, in this wave three down uh, of this C leg down. So the yield is uh, falling quite considerably at the moment. I suspect that's in anticipation of a, a rate cut cycle. We've seen that start around the world now. So the Bank of Canada, Bank of Switzerland, European Central Bank, and one or two others have all started to cut rates. Uh, the Fed probably will follow suit, not definitely, but probably. And I think this is the bond market bidding up bonds in anticipation of two things. One, cooling inflation, and two, as a result, uh, potential rate cut cycle. We use uh, the 10-year yield in our inner circle service to look at a couple of tradable securities, and they are uh, TLT, which is the 20 plus year bond ETF, and TMF, which is the three times daily levered uh, equivalent thereof. So we just look at TLT on your screen right now. We look at the longer term chart. This is a monthly chart, and you can see that uh, TLT, this is the ETF, remember, peaked at around 180 uh, in March of 2020. So the yield was on the floor and therefore bonds to the moon. Um, as inflation ticked up and in particular as rates ticked up, bond prices fell hard. And so TLT, the ETF went from 180 down to 82 in the course of, not very long at all, March 2020 uh, until October 23. So anyone owning uh, bonds during that time, government bonds, is having a very hard time indeed. Now, the lows that it hit were pretty remarkable, not seen since the financial crisis or the European debt crisis back in 2010, 2011, actually tipped a slight below that. Um, in a, you know, with, with no real crisis at hand, uh, in truth, just a, a rate high cycle. Um, pretty interesting call by the fund manager, Bill Ackman, November 2023. 
Uh, Ackman, as you may know, runs a, a large successful fund called Pershing Square, but also uh, is on a key advisory committee of the Federal Reserve, basically called uh, live on Twitter and said, time to stop, stop shorting US government bonds, time to buy them. That was in October 23. And the move up since then has been you know, clear for all to see. Uh, if we zoom in a bit on TLT, so this is a daily chart and uh, bond ETFs like, like any liquid institutionally tradable security do follow fairly standard technical patterns it seems. So this is the Bill Ackman calling the bottom in October 23. We have a wave one up where TLT runs from 82 up to 100 and then corrects again with this A, B, C correction and the low was in at the end of April 25th. Uh, just corrected between the 61.8 and the 78.6 retrace of that move up. And then right now it looks like bond prices are climbing. Uh, it looks like we're in a wave, smaller wave three or a larger wave three, which is why bonds are moving up so quickly. That's the most powerful part of any bull cycle usually. And um, TLT has been a, a, a really nice hold since that uh, end of the April low. So we had the cycle low uh, in October 23, 82. TLT is currently sat at 94 and probably uh, continue to head up in my opinion. Uh, TMF, uh, which is the three times uh, levered daily version of TLT. So the intent of this ETF is to deliver three times the uh, performance in each day of TLT. So TLT is up 1%, you'd expect TMF to be up around 3%. Uh, down 1% TLT, you'd expect TMF to be down around 3%. Uh, this is an instrument I own personally, I'm long TMF, um, and you can see that it follows the pattern uh, of TLT. So the bottom, uh, again, October 23, a move up, um, it's levered, don't forget. So leverage means amplification, that's what you get. 38 uh, at the low, 68 at the uh, December 23 high. Deep sell off to between the 78.6 and the 88.6 retrace. And then again, looks like we're in a wave three off, three up. Uh, so the cycle low uh, for TMF was around 38, currently at 52. And I think that we're likely to continue to head high. Again, for disclosure, I'm long TMF. Let's look now at uh, equity volatility. Um, as you'll be familiar, uh, the VIX is the, one of the easiest ways to look at this. Uh, this is a measure of uh, specifically S&P 500 volatility. Uh, you could think of it uh, as Jay, who runs our Jay op Jay's option service, says you can think about it as demand for puts is the most simple way to think about this. Um, it does not include certain sorts of options, doesn't include zero day to expiry options. So it's not a perfect measure, um, but it's a reasonable measure of, if you like, concern. So demand for puts is a, is a good way to think about how the VIX works. If you're interested in Jay's options service, by the way, head to our website, sesterincapitalresearch.com uh, and click uh, the menu item options at the top and you can learn all about that. It's a great service. Okay, so uh, the VIX is, is pretty suppressed right now, which is unusual because today, as you know, we have uh, Q2 options expiry. We're almost at Q2 quarter, calendar quarter end as well both of which tend to be important dates uh, in, in the equity markets in particular. Um, option expiry times uh, can be volatile uh, as a result of two things. Um, first of all, the expiries themselves uh, and investor behavior that follows, but also the hedging flows and the re-hedging flows that follow from uh, market maker behavior. It's normal to see uh, volatility elevated into OPEX and, and then collapse thereafter here. We don't have that. So whether that means volatility uh, moves up afterwards, I don't know. But again, this is a, it's a pretty bullish look for equities at the moment, given um, two things. One, uh, the quiet uh, extended bull run, um, and two, again, that Q2 options expiry coming up today. Um, VIX is up a bit off its recent floor, but I don't think you could call 13.45 high at all. So we'll see what happens later. Uh, if you want to trade this, various ways you can do so, UVXY, uh, three times levered long, SVXY, three times levered short, uh, pretty difficult instruments to trade. So if you're thinking about using those, uh, you need to have your wits about you. Let's move on and let's look at oil. So let's start by looking at the USO uh, ETF. So this is a really simple way to trade oil. Uh, it runs off of the West Texas Intermediate Futures Price. And here we have um, a weekly chart. Now oil, rather strangely, is heading up. In a world where you think inflation is coming down um, and where all we ever hear about is recessions, you expect oil to be coming down. It's not, it's moving up, which is a risk for inflation. And it's not a, necessarily a great sign for the economy. You know, a booming economy does consume more oil, um, but uh, oil prices going up uh, 
doesn't help economic growth usually. So here we have uh, USO uh, at the crash low, uh, the COVID crisis low, uh, and then a move up from a low of cycle low of 16 up to a cycle high of 91, uh, which hit in the middle of 22, a big bull market in energy, as you recall, during 22, that characteristic ABC correction. And then we start another cycle low uh, here in May 23 with USO at around 60. We have a wave one up, a two down, um, and then uh, it looks like we're in a wave three up now. And again, uh, if you look in the smaller waves, I think we're in a wave three of three up. So USO is currently at 79. I suspect it's going higher. Um, I have no position in oil at the moment, have been long recently, took profits probably too soon. I'm thinking about re-entering the market, but I've yet to do so uh, personally. UCO, which is on your screen right now, this is a two times levered daily ETF. So if USO goes up uh, 1% in a day, you would expect UCO to go up uh, 2%. Again, USO falls 1%, you'd expect UCO to fall by 2%. Here's how uh, this looks right now. So again, um, follows USO, but with that amplification that the leverage brings. Cycle low here in June 23. One up, 78.6% uh, wave two correction. And again, looks like we're in a wave three of three on the way up. UCO currently at 33 and probably headed higher, in my opinion. Um, if you like to use hedging with these levered ETFs, SCO uh, is the short, which is a minus two times daily USO and can be used as a hedge to good effect uh, on UCO. Let's move on to equities. Uh, let's do the S&P to begin with. This is a SPY ETF monthly chart. This is our long-term take. This is what we've been running as our base case, cautious case. And that says that um, if you chart this uh, SPY ETF from the 2015-2016 low, we're basically at a cycle high now. Uh, so if this chart's correct, and I don't think it is, by the way, but if this base case is correct, then the S&P is probably reaching its, its peak and ought to be rolling over soon to move into um, a new bear market. There are many, many indicators in the market which suggest that I don't, I don't think that is the case. This is a technically uh, valid chart for sure, but um, there's plenty of indicators around one, rates are likely to come down. That's probably at least a short term boost for equities. Two, um, there is a, a, a wall of money in money market accounts that's been earning high rates that once those rates start to cut will probably make its way back into uh, bonds and equities. And three, there are many, many constituent parts of the S&P that have extended beyond their own base case. Microsoft stocks one, XLK, the tech ETF is another, uh, SMH or SOXX, the semiconductor ETF is another, not to mention various semiconductor stocks that you'll be aware of, um, all of which are putting in much more bullish moves than the S&P. They're leading the S&P. So this looks like too cautious a look, I think. If we look at our more, more bullish take, uh, which is uh, here. This chart starts from the COVID low, which uh, more and more, I think, is the appropriate place uh, to start a, a trade point zero of these longer term uh, views. And so that says, here's the COVID low around 220 on the SPY. Uh, here's the uh, bull market high of around 480, let's call it, at the end of 21. 50% retrace, wave two low into the October 2022 bear market low at 350. And then it looks like we're presently in a wave three up that could end probably not before around 600. That would be the 100% extension of that wave one. And maybe, maybe as high as 766. I'm not sure I'd um, pin anything on uh, SPY reaching 766, but 600 looks looks doable. And you know, maybe we get to 650, 660. Um, and we just have to see if it can keep climbing as that goes. You know, if economic conditions remain benign, if jobs remain okay, inflation remains okay, it's certainly possible that we could see 766, but I'm not sure that one can um, bank on that yet. But the, the S&P moving a, a little bit high still, I, I would feel pretty good about it personally. If we zoom in uh, and look at the uh, the shorter term action, we look at SPX, that's the index, not, not tradable as you know, so that you can buy index uh, options and futures. Um, this is the SPX in a shorter time frame move. This is a daily chart and this starts at at uh, the March 23 low, which is when the, the recent bull market really got going in earnest. It had shrugged off a spike low here, retested this low a few times and really got going. So we see a wave one up to 4,600 or thereabouts in the middle of July last year, sell off, as you recall, down into October, uh, and then a rapid reversal. Um, so this is about a 61.8 wave two low here, rapid reversal. And we're now above the 1.618 extension on SPX. And this is really important. So we zoom in a little bit. Uh, 5400 
or thereabouts is a really important level on the S&P 500 index. And you can uh, track across to see what that means in the ES uh, futures uh, and also in the SPY ETF. But if you think about 5,400 on the, on the index, holding above that is really bullish because it means that it's turned a 1.618 extension into support. And that's a bullish sign for the, the near future. If it, if it fails this, if, if we get a reversal, let's say after Q2 OPEX, um, and it drops down and it can't um, push back over 5,400 from below, that's bearish. And it means we're probably in a wave four down. Now, at some point, we will see this wave four correction. And the question, of course, is where does it start? Um, in a more bullish scenario, perhaps the S&P moves up to this 200% extension of the prior wave one. That would be around 5,700 before a sell-off. What you know is a sell-off is coming. The question is, when does it start? And market tops are not as hard to spot as some people will try to convince you they are. Market tops happen when a key level can't be defeated, when it's retested from below multiple times and can't be defeated. And so that hasn't happened yet. The evidence yet is the S&P is going to continue to move up. That could change today, tomorrow. Um, we'll have to see. Um, but for now, I would look at 5,400 on the SPX as a key level for the S&P and as a consequence for the NASDAQ as well, because where the S&P goes, the NASDAQ tends to behave in the same sort of way. Speaking of the NASDAQ, let's look at the QQQ ETF. Again, longer term view. This is a weekly chart. And again, this has both our bull and base cases on it. And this chart, it, again, I think says that the base case we projected from the 2018 lows in this case uh, up to um, a wave, te technical wave five high, this base case has probably been exceeded. It should have topped out around 465 if that was going to be it. And it's pushed straight beyond that. And again, Microsoft and one or two other things are, are further ahead still. Um, so uh, the QQQ, I think, can make it to 520, maybe beyond uh, for a much more bullish case. And again, as to whether we're going to roll over right now, I would again look at that 5400 level on the SPX as a guide to where NASDAQ may go. If we zoom in and let's look at NQ futures there's a little bit of distortion in here by the way by a recent contract change but we don't have to worry too much about that for our purposes this is the more recent move up from the uh, april 19th spike lows and we've seen a one up two down 61.8 correction into the early may low a wave three up 200 percent extension uh, 23rd of may high a low on the 31st of May, spike low, as you can see, a nice reversal low. We're currently in this wave five up. And you know, perhaps, perhaps, perhaps we hit the wave five there and we're going to see a correction. We will see. Q2 OPEX can do that sort of thing. So I'd be ready for it. Personally, I'm not um, trading for it ahead of time. And if a correction comes, we'll see it. I think trying to go short now um, takes on, in my view, more risk than one needs to take. We're in a pretty powerful bull market. So we'll see if what we get is a small uh, cooling off or a, a proper retracement. I don't know yet. Um, short term, the Nasdaq certainly extended, so it could do with a sort of sideways action, uh, possibly a sell off before another run higher, I would have thought. But again, if you look back at that longer term view here, it tells you that most likely there's plenty of upside ahead. So unless one is trading very short term, it's easy to, to get mixed up trying to trade small retraces short uh, and get you know, all crossed up and out of position for the longer term move. Uh, let's look at TQQ. This is the three times levered uh, daily QQQ ETF. So QQQ up a percent, TQQ up 3%, down 1%, TQQ down 3%. Um, this, this is on a, a good track. It's yet to make a, a new high. Uh, 91 was the high, struck at the end of 2021 and the low 17. So these three times ETFs, you, you have to get the direction right. You have to learn to hedge, in my opinion, to use them correctly, otherwise they can uh, truly break your heart and wallet if you catch them on the wrong direction. Um, but this is a, a really strong move up. Um, I wouldn't, again, be surprised to see a small sell-off um, on the way uh, to higher highs. Uh, it will follow the QQQ chart, but with uh, more aggression. That's what the leverage does. But overall, looking medium term bullish, in my opinion. Let's look at the Dow. Here's the DIA, simple uh, Dow ETF. Uh, plenty of upside here, even in a, a fairly uh, boring base case outlook. Uh, the Dow um, has not uh, run up as much as the S&P and the NASDAQ, and I think it's got plenty to go. So even in a fairly cautious outlook, the DIA is coming at 392. I would say that it, could, it ought to be able to reach 420, maybe 455 without getting overly bullish at all. 
I think the Dow has a, a good look at the moment. And if we zoom in on the Dow, here is the uh, here's YM futures. Again, there's a little bit of distortion from contract changes, but doesn't matter for our purposes. Um, it, it's in a really strong move up at the moment. This is the April 19 low. We get a wave one up to just over 40,000. It was all over the news that the Dow hit 40,000. A 78.6 retrace down here. And then I think we're in a, a wave three up on this time scale. This is a daily chart stretching over um, a couple of different months. And it looks to me like we're in a wave three of three. So a fairly powerful move up for the Dow. It's notable that on a tough day for the S&P and the uh, NASDAQ yesterday, the Dow was uh, pretty nicely up. So I feel good about the Dow and I'm long UDAO, UDOW. That's the three times levered uh, Dow ETF. I'm also long TQQ. That's the three times levered um, NASDAQ ETF, and I'm long UPRO, which is the three times levered S&P ETF. Speaking of UDAO, let's take a look. And uh, again, this just looks like it's consolidating to me ahead of another move higher. So I think that UDAO can do well in the near term. Finally, let's take a look at a couple of sector ETFs. Let's look at TECL. This is a three times levered version of XLK. XLK is the tech ETF, which has led the S&P through this whole uh, bull phase. Um, TECL looks... Yeah, short term, you can maybe say it's um, it, it stretched. But uh, if the markets, if the S&P keeps moving up, this probably will keep leading, in my opinion. So nearer term, I would feel good about this. If you're trading TECL, it's good to have TECS uh, in your back pocket. That's the uh, inverse three times. It could be used to hedge really nicely and take advantage of that volatility. If you'd like to know how to do that, um, then our inner circle service uh, teaches the method and um, gives you practical work examples and real-time trade alerts for those things all the time. So again, uh, on our website, it's the premium inner circle service that, that you would want if you'd like to take advantage of that. Let's look at SOX. This is a semiconductor ETF, unlevered. Um, this, although semiconductor has been on fire lately, this to me looks like it has more ahead. It's yet to reach um, a 1.618 wave three extension of the move up from the COVID lows to the bull market highs retrace to the bear market lows, it's yet to reach that. That'll be 307, we're currently at 252. So hard to believe, given how much semis have run up lately, but I do believe that has further upside. Again, short term, anything can happen. And if you like to trade long and, and um, short on the short term, then SOXL and SOXS uh, are great instruments to do that. This is the three times levered SOXX ETF. Stretch at the moment, um, for sure, we could see some weakness in this. If so, SOXX. Uh, is a useful hedge for this. I'm personally unhedged long SOXL at the moment, and I'm thinking about whether I'm going to wind on any SOX hedges at all. I've yet to do so, but I may do so uh, after the making of this video uh, or not. Uh, if you're a member of Inner Circle, you'll get, as always, trade disclosure alerts before any such trade is placed. Finally, let's look at FNGU. Uh, this is essentially a three times levered uh, FANG uh, ETF. Look on the daily chart. And this, this is at a pretty important technical level. So what this does tells us a lot, I think, about where the market's headed. So uh, there's a low here at the end of 2022, we'll call that the bear market low, a wave one up to 227, a wave two down uh, to about 123. And we're now right at the 1.6 wave extension of that wave one place at the wave two low. And that so far has failed. It has not pushed up over that. So if, if FNGU starts to sell off, it's probable that so too will the S&P and the NASDAQ. So this is a good one to watch. So 443 is that level. Uh, if it comes down and pushes up through it and heads up to the 500s, that's a very bullish sign for markets. If it can't break through there, then we'll likely see some correction in the NASDAQ and the S&P as well, perhaps not the Dow. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. Any questions, if you're an Inner Circle member, um, reach out to Slack anytime. If you'd like to join, again, head to our website, sestringcapitalresearch.com. Uh, there's a, a menu item premium at the top. Click that and your inner circle service, you can join them. Thanks for watching. Talk to you all soon, folks.